Hi everyone and welcome back to Set the Pipe. I'm Sully. This is my first interview. It is with Tim Bear Johnson, Division One National Champion, International Coach, Collegiate Coach, International Player, all around great guy. We're going to explore his life in volleyball, hear some tragics about his family. He's offered some books that you can actually purchase below fantastic coaching books and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so i can do more interviews like this solid interview i really hope you enjoy it so without further ado let's get to it okay first ever interview on set the pipe and i got my boy tim johnson we call him bear um former teammate of mine i He's got a good story, and I think people need to know about it. Welcome to the show, Bear. Thanks, Sully. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> yeah, good to see you, man. <laughs> hey, so just to let our viewers know, this guy, and we're going to go into his history a little bit, high school volleyball was pretty fortunate because in, he's in California right now, and that's pretty normal, but the more out east you go, it's just not available, and you know that. So played high school ball. We'll go into his high school career, college career. Uh, he's a national champion, um, open club uh, nationals. He's a national champion, went overseas to play in France and his coaching stints happened through that. And he's been on the women's side and men's side. And I think he's just got a great story to tell. And uh, the people in Southern California know who Bear is. And but I think with this podcast and the legends who I want to interview, you're at the top of the list, you know. And I, I've I've spoken to Misty May, and I've spoken to you know Alan Knipe, and I've spoken to a lot of people, and I'm hoping to get them on, on this show as well. But yeah, man, <clears throat> I know you're humble, but once you start going over your volleyball bio, it's pretty impressive. I mean. Thank you. Yeah. There's not too many guys, Bear, um, or gals, for that matter, that has done women and men's and been successful at it. And we'll get into that a little bit of why men's over women's or is it opportunity or whatever the case may be. But <clears throat> let's start, you know, you went to Fountain Valley High School. You were a basketball player. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I played basketball and football basically since I was about seven or eight years old. I had older well, brothers. You football? Older... I did. Did I you really? Football. I Not didn't know that. Silly, I've seen See? your highlights, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't know that. That's <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, okay. I, I was a wide receiver and I played um, uh, DB as well. Corners and safeties. Yeah. So how tall were you in high school when you played football? You weren't six. Uh, so bear six, four. Yeah, no, I was, I was kind of skinny. I didn't really start. Um, I would say physically developing until my junior year. Oh, okay. So okay. I didn't, I didn't play football all four years in high school. So, okay. But I did play like uh, tackle football starting when I was 12 or whatever. And then when I got to high school, my freshman year, um, I played I played football, tackle football, and I played basketball. And after basketball season, um, my basketball coach literally walked me down to volleyball tryouts. And he's like, I think this will help your basketball skills playing volleyball. So and are we talking freshman year he walked you in? or That was my freshman year after okay. the basketball season ended. Okay. And uh, I knew a little bit about volleyball, but I never really played. And um, a couple of the other basketball guys that I played with also was at that tryout. And um, I I made the team somehow. And Because uh, even at that time, I mean, Southern California boys volleyball was strong. It's, I mean, it still yeah, is. This was in the uh, uh, you mid-80s. Newbie, you get a newbie coming in. Yeah. Right, from basketball, trying this volleyball thing, you actually made the team. Right. So, yeah, yeah, there was probably about 20 of us. I made the first cut. I made the cut and ended up really liking volleyball, and I gave up football after my freshman year because uh, okay. playing three sports was a little little much for me, especially uh, my grades kind of suffered my freshman year. Yeah. So I just stuck with basketball and volleyball um, through high school. And uh, I, I did want to play basketball in college, but uh, I had more offers and more opportunity playing volleyball. So I did go to the community college route before I went to Long Beach, but I ended up playing volleyball in college. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting because you talk to athletes or you see athletes and like, oh, yeah, I played this sport and I played that sport. You know, you're like, yeah, you probably sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw you play basketball one time. I We were on some kind of like uh, – I don't know if it was on the beach that there was a blacktop and you were playing and all of a sudden you just took off on one foot and just dunked over somebody. I'm like, 
holy crap, like Bear can play. I, uh, yeah, you know, actually, um, not to toot my own horn, but I was the most valuable on my basketball team. Oh, no kidding. Senior year. Yeah. Nice. I think I was all conference or all league or something like that, too. Yeah. I was the shortest center in my conference when I played in high school. And I mean, but I out jumped. I think I got out jumped one time. And then, you know, when you do a jump ball, but the guy was like six, eight, six, nine or something crazy. But I was surrounded by tremendous athletes. I mean, we had. We were small town, right? In California, we had the 100-meter state champion on our basketball team. I mean, that's big schools in big schools. Yeah, so – and just guys that went on to college and play, just unbelievable. But we were so we were so small, and it was the last year of non-three-point. We couldn't – you know, we couldn't yeah. shoot a three-pointer. So the next year after we graduated, they implemented that. So I think we would have been a lot more <clears throat> tight in games, but we just – you know, they just like, hey, just put it down the center where that short guy is, and we'll just, you know, score a ton of points. So well, You had the hops back then. Yeah, so I did have the hops back then. Yeah, and yeah. I kind of did too, actually. That was about. Um, no, you could you fly. Know, I did the. Uh, you know, I would I would do the jump at the beginning of the game and all that stuff, yeah, yeah. and I kind of had the Rodman style where my my coach literally told me not to shoot outside the key, <laughs> so I basically just um, rebounds and I played pretty good defense, and I I got a few dunks during my my senior year. Yeah, that nice. was kind of things that I wanted to do. I barely took any outside shots. You know, interesting story. So uh, there was a guy by the name of David Leith. Uh, probably don't know him. He actually volleyball player in uh, another school, and he went on to play at Santa Barbara. He was a gaucho, and he was on that team that went to the finals against okay. SC's team with Lawrence Hom, right? And they, and, they, and Santa Barbara actually lost that. But okay. that was my best game because the first play of the game, he stole the ball and, like, I think it was actually from me and he dunked it. I'm like, Oh no, this is not, this is not happening. And I, I don't know, like scored like 23 or 28. I've never done that in my life and nor did I after that. Right. So I'm like, this volleyball player is not going to get that on me. And he just dunked like, that's not okay. So, uh, yeah, but that was my extent. Uh, I mean, I was, I was definitely the fifth guy on the court for sure mm -hmm. for basketball, but you were the MVP dude. I didn't have any idea. Look at this. It was awesome uh, already. We made playoffs. Um, CIF, and it's kind of a long story how we, we barely squeaked in. So we played a really good uh, team, St. Bernard's, and um, they're inner city. And the, and the very first play of the game, they tipped the ball, right, yeah. long, and the guy just dunked it. And that's how that's how the game started. Yeah. And uh, there was actually – they beat us, and there was actually four dunks in that game. They had three. One guy got a technical for a reverse hanging on the rim, but I, I did have one of the dunks, and it was that a three-point play. I dunked over a guy, and that's my basketball highlight. No, that's so, that's cool, yeah. though, man. So then, okay, <laughs> so now, you're, even talking about now you're into this volleyball thing, right? Yeah, and so yeah. how long – and this is good for – you know, viewers out there that can see this today, tomorrow, five years, 10 years down the road about not playing club at 12. You actually started playing volleyball as a freshman. I didn't start playing volleyball until my sophomore year. I did football and basketball and I swam. We were year-round swimmers. So my freshman year, I swam. And then I'm like, I want to try this other sport that my sister actually played at Fresno State Volleyball. Mm -hmm. So, of course, everybody thought it was a natural, <clears throat> but uh, that wasn't the case. I think the first swing I did went probably up 30 feet and because I didn't know anything <laughs> about hitting balls down. Right? All I knew is I can jump in them so they hit the ball. Any case, um, you get started your freshman year. When did you start getting the hang of it? Well, you know, um, that's that's a pretty good question. I, uh, I, I, I never could really pass that well. So that mm -hmm. was always a difficult uh, skill for me, but I, I – you know, um, I'm going to compare it to basketball one more time, I think, where, you know, getting a, a ball in a hoop was, was difficult for me. I told you I wasn't a very good shooter. Right. But getting this little volleyball into a 30 by 30 uh, <laughs> uh, court, I thought was a lot easier. So yeah. the first couple times I took a swing, I'm like, wow, this is, I like this. Yeah, and yeah. so I, I, be, I thought I was okay even my freshman year just jumping and hitting. The other skills, Took me a while to get, and I would say by the time I was in my junior year, I was playing varsity, um, and so that we only had three teams at that high school. We had a frost off team, a JV team, and then varsity. Okay. So basically, you play frost off your freshman year, you play JV your sophomore year, and then you spend two years on on the varsity team. And I, you know, coming out my junior year, you're younger than the most of the guys, right? Because they're seniors, right. but I felt like I could kind of hang with them. Um, and some of the skills, and that's when I kind of thought, yeah, I, I can do this. I can play yeah, maybe I at another out, level. When I tried out my sophomore year, 
I was told, everybody was told before the tryouts began, okay, only this, so if anybody's thinking about playing on varsity, your freshman or sophomore year, you can forget about it. There's only one person in the gym that's going to do it, and he pointed at a buddy of mine named Scott, and I'm like, oh, oh, okay, it's on. Like, it's on, <laughs> right? Because right. I just, I mean, football, basketball, contact sports, I was just kind of that. Um, they call me the silent competitor, right? So yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. So then after the tryouts were done, he goes, okay, so remember I said, <laughs> we got two guys, right? So that's how mine all started. But, you know, I didn't, I actually didn't play club until my senior summer. Okay. Crazy, yeah. right? Yeah, well, I did the same thing. I was the yeah. same way. And, yeah. and that's how I was discovered. Okay. Actually, I uh, uh, and that's hopefully will bleed into some other interviews because the team that I played against, you're going to love this. Lawrence Hum was the coach. Mm -hmm. You had Dan Greenbaum, the setter. Wow. You had Brian Ivey. Um, West, his last name was West. Mm. You had Fenoy, Carl Hinkle. Those are big names. Yeah, that's what yeah. three or four Olympians right there. That was a high school team, and I didn't know who they were. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't even nowhere near Southern California, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I had a forty inch vertical, so I was blocking these guys like straight down, boom, boom, and I'm yelling and stuff, and everybody's like, "Dude!" So that's how I got noticed. Was like, "Who is that guy?" Like he's not a, you know, and I'm like, he went. I'm like, I know who they were. Until I get to college, like, oh yeah, he was, you know, top player in the country in high school, you know, besides Foster, you know, Huey, so. Um, so yeah, so, okay. So, so now you're on the road to, you're graduating from Fountain Valley. Well, let me like, back up just a sec though. So yeah, if yeah. you don't mind, um, one thing that was kind of cool back then, we didn't really have a whole lot of club volleyball back right. in, in, in the eighties. We just represented our school. And, uh, my freshman coach was a guy named Bill Lovelace. Do you know oh, Bill Lovelace? Bill Lovelace. That was legend. my freshman coach. Okay. So he's a legend in volleyball, uh, especially at Long Beach state. And it was really awesome to have him as, as my first coach. Cause he, he taught really good technique and all that, but he was in the volleyball community. And, um, we went to UCLA uh, during the summer for junior Olympics mm -hmm. and we stayed a week at UCLA and we stayed in the dorms and we got to play in poly pavilion a couple of times. You know, they had like, mm -hmm. 10 courts going at one time in Poly, but still we got to play in there, right? Yeah, Poly, that's legendary, buddy. It, and Carlos Brasino was on our team because oh, yeah, uh, yeah. he went to Fountain Valley, another Olympian. Yeah, another Olympian. And, and, um, and we just had a blast up there. I mean, it was unbelievable. And we, we were watching the guys that were older than us because we were like a you know, freshman, sophomore team. And we were looking at guys like Sam Blood. Eric Sato, they were playing right. for like Samo High. They were a right. couple years ahead of us. Right. Adam Johnson was, I think they played in the finals that year. And it was just unbelievable watching those guys at that level, just coming into the sport, not knowing anything. Right. Right. And wanting to be like those guys. Yeah. <clears throat> Craziness. I mean, kind of, kind of the same thing. I just, <clears throat> Bob Stavertlick is the guy that actually I wanted to be. And I'm hoping to get on an interview with him just because of that reason. Right. So, he was at Long Beach State, which I didn't know about. But during that time, he went to Pepperdine, NCAA Player of the Year. I thought he was a phenomenal player, right? And yeah. so I'm like, oh, that's the guy. So when Long Beach State, basically after that match, says, told my coach, who's now my brother-in-law, says, hey, come have him come talk to me. Have, you know, Patrick Sullivan come and talk to me. And so I totally blew him off. I'm like, yeah, right. Like, Long Beach State's number six in the country. I, I was ready to go to Fresno State, play football, mm -hmm. by the way. I already had okay. the scholarship, the whole deal, right? Yep. So the next <clears throat> day, he's like, my, my brother-in-law or a coach at the time is like, hey, did you ever go talk to that Long Beach State coach? I'm like, no, he doesn't want, he doesn't want to talk to me. He's like, no, <laughs> like he walked me over there. And so I met Ray Rattel. And he's yeah, like, that name sounds familiar. He's like, mm, uh, why don't you come with me here? I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'm following this random guy. Like, I, I don't even know him, right? Random guy to his office. Hey, uh, I like what I see out there. And I'm like, okay. He goes, can I have your phone number? And so remember, there's no cell phones back then. So yeah. call my parents and said, hey, take a look at your son playing volleyball down here. I'm, I'm Coach Ray Rattel from Long Beach State, and I want to offer him a scholarship. I'm like, I don't even know who you are. Wow. Like, yeah, it was crazy, right? It was crazy. But that's kind of just, awesome. you know, things happen kind of that way. Unless you were Southern California, you were in the know and, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, all those guys I named off, I mean, those guys were already committed to, you know, USC and Santa Barbara and UCLA right. and all that stuff already. But <clears throat> so, 
like I said, so you get out of Fountain Valley and you're like, okay, I'm thinking this volleyball thing's pretty cool. And you actually went the JC route. Was that mm-hmm. by choice? Was that because you didn't get recruited? I mean, because remember, so for all those people out there that specifically are really watch women's volleyball, <clears throat> there's like 344 Division One teams, right? For women mm-hmm. and men's, not so much. I mean, there really isn't. So you're this. You're talking about the select few that can play at that level, right? So tell me about your like recruiting history or just how you, how you wound up where you wound up. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. So I had a, I had a couple offers. Um, I remember when I was uh, a senior in high school, um, I was actually planning on going to Loyola Marymount. I had a scholarship there and um, with the setter on my team, which was uh, Norma Bella. Mm-hmm. He and I, um, good guy. Yeah. Real good guy. He's, uh, yeah, we're still in contact. He lives out in Texas, but anyway, so, um, we were going to go to a Loyola Marymount. I think they were going to give us some money and we went on the recruiting trip up there and did the whole thing. And this, the coach at the time was Kevin Cleary. And, uh, it wasn't, I don't think a super strong program, but it was still D one. And we're like, okay, if they're going to give us some money, let's do it. You know? And then he ended up quitting right before uh, the season um, to go play on the AVP. I think the AVP just got resurrected. And so he left, and that kind of – they brought a new coach in, I think, Mike Norman. and um, Storman. We decided, Storman Norman, and we decided yeah. not to go. And um, I, I did get recruited by Pepperdine as well. Mm. I remember uh, I was looking in a scrapbook not too long ago, and there was a letter from um, Rod. Yeah. Rod – yeah, Rod Wild, he called me too, yeah. and Yoder called me from yeah. USD as well. Yeah, and I'm after not that sure, tournament, I'm not sure exactly why I didn't pursue that. I don't really remember. Maybe it was money or finances. Maybe they wanted me to walk on, but those were basically the two schools that were had showed interest in me my senior year. And um, my brother went to Golden West College. Um, it was uh, right right down the street from my house. And to be honest with you, I don't know if I was really mature enough at the time to go to a D one school. Um, I was just doing a lot of things in my life or whatever. And I, I knew I liked volleyball, but I wasn't really taking academics that, that serious or whatever. So I I chose to go to, uh, to golden West college for a year. So, and you, did you guys wind up in state that year? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Orange coast, actually, they just resurrected their program with Bob Wetzel and, and Mike D'Alessandro and all those guys. And, uh, they came out, first year program and came out and, and, and won state that was like against Brian Lewis. And yeah, they were, they were good back then. And then you were, but you were chosen all state. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I, I made all state there. And uh, so, the two years I did play at golden West, I was all state. Yeah. So you have, so, so my assistant coach was Robert McNutt. He was a yes. fantastic volleyball player out of Pepperdine. <laughs> Hardcore. Great stories as an assistant coach. Oh, by the way, uh, and That's then cool. Long Beach State got um, Delhi Biggs, yeah. right? Mike Delisandro, yeah. who you mentioned, was at OCC, and that was shortly after. So, did you guys both come in the same year? Um, no, was, I was Delhi I think, the year before yeah, that. Yeah. Delhi was the year before that. Oh, you're I, right. You're right because yeah. ninety is when we went to the finals, and yeah, right. Delisandro was on on the bench. So, so who recruited you? Was it Ray? Was it Mike? Well, you know was what? It... When I was playing at Golden West, Ray came to a couple of the games and talked to me, kind of like you. And then um, it's kind of funny, uh, Delhi. I talked to Delhi quite a bit, and Delhi and Alan Knipe and I, all three of us, uh, had our recruiting dinner together. Oh. And that was back, I think, in 89. Okay. And uh, I was planning on going there in 90 after Golden West, but I broke my arm pretty severely, and I had to redshirt that year. So that's mm. that's one of the reasons why I didn't go in 90. Gotcha. But, uh, uh, Alan and, and Mike and I, we all had dinner, uh, together and we all decided that Long Beach would be the place we'd go. Cool. And, yeah. and look what happened. So we can talk about that next step, right? Okay. So you go to Long Beach state and you join these really blue collar worker type guys, right? I mean, we, we weren't the pedigree that UCLA and SC and Pepperdine had the dime. You know, you know what I mean? And we had a, a, some guys, Mark Karens. We had Brett Winslow who came back. Cooch really started that thing in 90, right? Then he left with Karens. Yeah. Those are two huge shoes to fill. And 
you know, you came in and uh, Knipe was there the year before that, but <clears throat> then Allen stepped up as that middle that we needed opposite of Winslow, went in front of Cooch. And then we had, you know, and we won the national championship. I mean, first ever in Lumbee State history. And so I lost one in 90. We won one in 91. And then when you left, I, that was 92 was probably the best team I've ever been on. I mean, we crushed everybody. Northridge upset us. And then in, comes the end of the season, you know, we get upset a couple of times and we're out. But I got to tell you, those are three special years. We were number one in the country, you know, majority of the time. And, you know, you look at us and people are like, wow, you know, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't play all that much. I'm like, I tell everybody all the time, I'm like, yeah, but I had three Olympians in front of me. Like, <laughs> you know, and then for you, Tim, you know, you had Zach Small and Matt Lyles. And, you know, and those are, as a tandem, they were the best passers in the country at the time. And so it's like, so where do you guys fit in? And this is where I think this interview is still really important, is understanding at, as we've gotten older and we can coach the younger ones about our role, the role players and how important that is. Granted, it's all, it's always important to have the studs, right? But I got to tell you, day in and day out in practice, the ones that don't play and they understand their roles about pushing your own teammates in the weight room, at practice, making sure they're accountable in the training room, everything that goes along with that. I, I don't think there's one person on our team that would ever in their lifetime say that we didn't contribute to that ring. Yeah, I, you know, it, um, when when I first arrived in Long Beach, you, you mentioned like blue collar workers, correct? Yeah, and I was very very impressed with the work ethic. Um, it didn't seem like you know sometimes in a season uh, you'll have some practices that are just kind of eh, so so. I, I I don't remember one practice that not everybody was going a hundred percent, and I think a lot of it had to do with the ninety team yeah. getting as far as they did. And not win in that national championship. Yeah, and we and were number was, one going into that thing. That was a stinger, you know. And uh, I, I felt the first day that the attitude was, "Hey, we're not going to let that happen again." Our main goal, no matter what, is to win the national championship. And it's not like we talked about it, but it was that underlying um, feeling or thought going into every practice, every match. That hey, our goal is to win this thing. So did and you, were you intimidated going into that? Were you like nervous or like, Oh, I'm like, am I going to fit in? Or you're like, Oh no, this is, this is home. This is exactly where I want to be. Um, a little bit of both. You know, okay. I, I like to be at that level where everybody was in tune of what was going on and everybody was given their, their all. Um, but when you're playing against guys like Hilliard and Winslow and some of those guys, I was a little intimidated and, um, uh, I was a little nervous sometimes. Um, you know, any chance I got to play, I got to play a little bit, and that was great. Um, yeah, we all did. You, you helped me with the attitude because, you know, I, I've been on several teams in my whole life, a lot of different sports. Uh, at times I was the worst worst kid on the team, and sometimes I was the best kid on the team, and everywhere in between, right? So you helping me find my role was great because, you know what? We had such great guys on that starting six, and we figured out our role was going to be to push those guys. And you know what? I became a much better player playing against those guys, basically the national championship team, every day in practice. And uh, we had something a few years ago. We had like 25 years or whatever, and, and Alan, Alan said something um, at the ceremony about how – I don't want to say how great – it was it, how great it was for us to be pushed by the, the second team. And I thought that was an honor. And that's 25 years later. And, and he's still appreciative. And, I, you know, a thing that sometimes happens on teams I've seen where the starters, there's a division between the starters and the non-starters, right? I didn't, I didn't feel that with our team. We were just one wheel trying to – you know, get to that, that finals. And it didn't matter if you were the best guy on the team, the worst guy on the team, you were on the team and you contributed. And to this day, I think we're all tight. You know, uh, we all have great relationships with each other and there is no hierarchy on the team. It didn't matter who you were. Yeah. You know, I, 
I think there was a time it was three. I don't know if you remember this. It was three quarters, about three quarters through the season, and we all want to play, like we all wanted to play. And I remember like. Mike Nelson was coming to his own, but then he was kind of mopey one day and everybody was just kind of like hanging their heads because we want to, who doesn't want to play? Oh, right. Yeah. You're right. Absolutely. And so I, I turn, I, so again, and I tell people the same story you just did. I'm like, we not only played against the number one team in the country, we beat them like in drills, yeah. we would beat them. Yeah. Right. I mean, that was, that was kind of our job. And, and when we went into matches, we were fine. Like every, you know, it wasn't like, Oh no. Bears in, you know, we're going to, that's yeah. three points we're giving away. It, that just never happened. We held our own, you know, but we weren't Brent Hilliard, the one of the best players of all time in yeah. indoor volleyball collegiately, right? We weren't those players. But I remember I turned to Ray and I'm like, hey, Ray, can I get a timeout? And I thought he was going to rip on me. I did. Or just go, Sully, eh, right? You know, he's like, yeah. okay, Sully, you got it. Yeah. So I gathered everybody up. I'm like, listen, we're never going to play the rest of the year. This is crunch time. We're not playing. Yeah. See those guys over there? Those guys are going to be on the court. Those guys are going to get us the ring. We got to do a better job over here to understand that we have to kick their butt. We right. have to be better than the number two or number three team in the country right now. Right. And I think at that moment, and that was, I, I specifically remember Mike Nelson. Mm -hmm. That guy played great after that little meeting because he was mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know what? Screw this. I'm yeah. not going to play. So I'm going to show you why I should be playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he yeah. played awesome. And I think everybody played loose. We started talking trash across the net more. Yeah. And and I think you're right. Except for that brief moment in time, you know, was we could have went downhill and just was like, well, we're not going to play. You know, this sucks. It it does suck not playing. No, but that, if you yeah, yeah, that's a bummer. You you know, know, yeah, for sure. if you understand your role, it's it's so much more plentiful. It's so much more fruitful, right? And like you said, 25 years later, you're not going to get one guy that were like, oh, it was all Hilliard. Like, well, you know, Hilliard was freaking great. No one's going <laughs> to deny that. You know what I mean? For sure. Niper was great. Yeah. Winslow was great. Yeah. We had Lyles and we had Stimfix setting. And we had Schroes yeah. set most of the season, right? right. That no one's going to say that guy didn't deserve that ring because he didn't put in the work. Right. You know? And I think you're right. I think it was a, a special year. But I, I, I really love the fact that we can share those stories with players today because I think it's very me, me, me driven. I need to play like, but you know, you, you look at the national championship just on the women's side, just one for Texas. Not everybody played, mm -hmm. but uh, I bet you everybody on that team, uh, you know, was driven for one goal and they, and they met it. And like, I like to get, you know, Sully Eric Sullivan on this and talk about his history, but also talk about the season. Like, Hey, you know, did they understand their roles? I mean, that's, I think that's a huge part that is we, you and I can deliver to players to say, Hey, no, you are important. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's great. You say that because, um, I, I did feel part of the community on that team and I didn't feel like a second person or whatever. And right. as a coach, I try to instill in my players that every single person on the, on the roster is important. You know, they have to find a role or I, f I find them a role. And if we're going to be um, a successful team, um, they need to know that. And uh, when I first started coaching, I used to read some uh, some coaching books. You know, I, I read like Phil Jackson. I think it was Hoop Dreams and um, um, just a couple other guys, too. I think Pat Riley. I read basketball and uh, wooden books or whatever. But one thing I remember – reading about Phil Jackson's book is keeping those so-called bottom players um, happy. Okay. The guys that aren't going to see much time, the guys that are on the end of the bench and finding something for them to do where they feel that they are helping the program because those guys, it, they can become a cancer to a team. If they oh, have that sure. crappy attitude, um, if they, uh, you know, they start feeling sorry for themselves, you know, hanging their heads, kicking rocks, whatever you want to call it. And that can bring the whole team down because they're not getting their way, that me attitude. So I, I took that and I've tried to install that, instill that with my players that might not be getting as much playing time as they want and finding something for them to do where they feel like they're contributing. You know, you know and they could be fighting two battles on that, right? They can be fighting themselves, but also parents going, well, you should be. 
you know how parents, you know, yeah. you should be playing and, you know, you should be playing in front of Jimmy or Sally. And, you know, yeah. th- that doesn't help because I had one player and this was not that long ago, right? That basically said she was a role player, fantastic role player. I mean, put her anywhere you want, but she wasn't all conference. And I knew yeah. that going into the school she was going into, I knew she wasn't going to be, but she was the ultimate role player. She can play middle, right side, left side. She can even go DS if you need her, right? And this is Division One, yeah. And she came to me teary-eyed and basically said, I love where I'm at. I love my role, but my parents don't get it. Yeah. You know I mean, my parents, my parents don't get it. They want me to play. They don't understand why I'm not playing. I'm like, I don't need to answer those. I'm, I know my role. I know I'm going to play a ton sometimes. And yeah. I'm not going to play at all others. Like she yeah. got it, right? She, she got she it. She did it, yeah. yeah and, and she's playing professional right now overseas. Oh, wow. She gets it. Yeah. So really cool story. I'm going to get her on here as well. What, what's her name? Uh, Jaden Blanchfield. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I like she. she yep. She came I took out her to California. Down California. Friends with her on Facebook. I follow her. That's who I thought you were talking about. Yep, yeah, exactly. That's a great, great story. story. Late bloomer. She's got a great story too. I mean, that's that's good for the girls to understand that, you know, there there was a kid, and I I saw potential in her, and the coach was like, "You want her? Like, you want her?" I'm like, "Yeah, that girl right there. I want that girl." They're like, "Her? You? Yeah. You want her?" I'm like, and I and I knew I, I saw her, right. and I just saw the potential in her. She came out and tried out. She had that worst tryout ever, <laughs> ever. And then I told her parents, "I'm like, hey, if I didn't see her before, there's no way I'd pick her." And her mm-hmm. her dad got upset. He was so mad, and her mom's like, "I love this guy. He's honest." Like. Yeah, I want to, we want to be a part of this. And basically, she was just a late bloomer. Yeah. She really was. And she yeah. excelled. She went to a junior college, went to Division One. Now she's playing pro. This is like her yeah. fourth or fifth year. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. I've, I, like I said, I follow her on Facebook. We're friends on Facebook. And yeah. So I think like where I said, she, she is right now. I'm not sure. Yeah. So just good stories in terms of role playing. And, you know, because in order to be at that level, you had to be a superstar at one time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then the, the, the higher tier you get, you know, you play, that's great. If you're not, you're part of it, you know, and you're doing it. And I think that's, that's kind of lost. So during your 1991, like I said, national champion, we won it in Hawaii. Oh, by the way, you couldn't get any sweeter than that. And, um, your mom was there. Beautiful woman, right? You lost her. How many years after that? Uh, well, um, it'll be 20, it's 20 years right now. 20 years. Yeah, that was I think two thousand. That was brutal, and yeah, and then your um, biological dad passed away in a horrific accident, right down San Diego ish. Yeah, yeah, he, yep. that was kind of a weird thing. I was over in yeah. Europe actually coaching at the time, and uh, got a phone call from my brother in law saying that my dad had been in an accident. Yeah, that and, was crazy. Yeah, it was just kind of yeah. He wasn't driving, but um, I don't know. They they went into the bay. And, right. That's uh, what I mean. That's yeah. just, that's just a, San Diego Bay. yeah, that's one of those you make into a sad movie, like just cause it's not, it's just unbelievable. Right. I yeah. mean, so to lo- yep. lose your two parents, your stepdad really cool. just lost him, uh, <laughs> recently. In May. But yeah. What's that? In May. Yeah. He passed in away yeah. in May. Yeah. 84 so, years old. He just, yeah, he just was old. Good guy. I mean, you were surrounded yeah. by good people. So yeah. he was I mean, my that, coach when I was a kid, you know, my, my stepdad and he, yeah. He, he um he was my basketball coach and my flag football coach and my tackle football coach and we used to win some city championships when we were young with him and yeah uh, um yeah he was I w- he was with me all the way to the end I had him running the scoreboard last last season at, oh, at exactly. Santiago <laughs> oh every time he saw me Sully yeah big handshake you know how are you so good to see you yeah, I actually got to meet uh, some of my kids so I was really happy about that he was he's a big supporter for sure. So you go to Long Beach State, win the national championship. And then this is a lot of people don't, there's what's called open nationals and it's for adults. It's after you play college and we were put on a team called a six Paul Mitchell first. Well, do you know my first club team after college? Do you remember that? The red and blockers. I was part of the Orville red and blockers, baby. <laughs> Gary fish. Uh, it was a great. Day, by the way. Um, yeah. Costi was on that team. Which Costi, Chris or John? John. John Costi. Oh, yeah, Chris yeah. was too young to play, right? Yeah, and there's yeah, a Costi. guy, Jarrett, I think he's like a senator now out of, or a congressman now out of uh, San Francisco. Anyway, so 
Uh, that was my first start. And then Delhi just happened to walk by and said, Oh yeah, they're solely, you know, and I just went off. Like I was hitting pipes out of the back, digging crazy, like crazy. He's like, dude, you got to play with this next year. I'm like, well, if you ask, yeah, that'd be nice. You know? So we got on that team and Delhi asked me to play too. That's how I got on there. Um, yeah. One morning, you know how they were playing Saturday mornings, I think down in Irvine or yeah, one, of those, yeah, yeah. one of those places. I got a call yeah, from the warehouse. Were, yeah. In yep. the warehouse. And they were, they were short a player. He's like, Barry, get your butt out of bed. You're playing today. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm doing it. Yeah. And uh, I guess I made the, I made, I, I, I played okay, I guess. And they asked yeah. me back. So, well, I got to yeah. tell you. Uh, so, I had Stimfig most of my career at, at Long Beach State. He was, you know, All American. And then I, had, but the best, I, I tell you this all the time, the best setter I've ever hit on was Delisandro yeah. Biggs. I mean, after yeah. college, I was, unstoppable i was right. i would have guys that we played against northridge se like dude where did you play yeah. michael I, I, played remember, you, but I got to watch you a lot you know i remember I mean? like, you and delhi though you guys connected about three oh or my four, god a couple years after college yeah after i was hitting like 800s yeah. 750s yeah, in the you middle guys really connected well and you were unstoppable I, and I pesto that. was like solely What's going on? I'm like, I don't know, I'm getting playing time, I guess. <laughs> you know, you know, like what do you, what do you say? But that was yeah. when I peaked for sure. So mm -hmm. we got on those team and we won a national championship during that time. Mm -hmm. And we played with this is why that club adult open nationals is great. We played with a guy who played in Hawaii, USC, UCLA. We had Northridge guys on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had we had the gamut, and I thought that was so fun i thought it was so fun because then you realize oh my gosh how many olympians did we have the future olympians that we have on that team i mean eric sullivan was on there hinchel was on there i mean yeah. alan knight was the coach i mean right. are you kidding me right so just to be able to play with those different all americans from different schools was really cool uh how many years did you play on a6 paul mitchell and how many national championships did you win yeah you're putting me on the spot i should know that i know i i, I won we won so I like Tom Hoff, right? Olympian yeah. gold medalist. He was yeah. on that team that we won. Yeah. So we won two, two. I won. I was on two and I lost one. Yeah. I, that, that it's hard for me to remember those. I'm sorry. In the sense That's of, okay. okay you, you were, you stayed on. I walked away. Right. I, I walked um, away and you stayed on. So, I mean, I, I remember winning one in uh, Memphis. That was yep. my first year. That was like maybe 93 or 92, 93. Um, then Tulsa, um, uh, we we made we it lost to the finals Ukraine. Times in Holyoke. That that was yeah. That, yeah, the one in Massachusetts we lost to Ukraine, and that was yeah. uh, when Presho, the MVP of the year before, went down. Yeah, and they put me in there. Mm -hmm. And and this is a Coley, this is a Coley and Geeter conversation. But <laughs> yeah, they put me in and rap yeah, Eddie raps like, "So are you ready?" I'm like, "Yeah, dude." Like. Yeah. I didn't see the big deal. Well, you know, it's the same thing. Like, well, you don't, you didn't play much at Long Beach. I'm like, no, dude, I played against these cons every single day. I'm fine. You know yeah. what I mean? And then it was match point for, in the semis, it was match point for the other team they were serving. Mm -hmm. And we had a rally. And Wally, yep. right? Our setter, yep. John, John Wallace, Wallace. Set, yep. sets me a D in the back row. And I put it over the block down and put it away. And I remember afterwards, Coley going, why in the hell did you say so? I'm like, thanks, man. He goes, well, I'm no, like, you know, you had all these big guns, you know, yeah. what, you know what Wally said? Cause he I called know. it. Cause he, cause I could hear him. Yeah. Cause I heard him. <laughs> I, I, so I set the D he goes, I didn't even think about it. He yeah. had a great match. So it's not like, Oh, I'm going to set solely or I'm not going to set him. It's like, I heard him. I throw it back there and I put it away and we freaking won it. And we went to the finals. Yep. And then I rode the pie in the finals, but that's a whole nother story yeah. too. So, <laughs> There was there was a couple other ones too, like Milwaukee. Uh, I think we won in Milwaukee. See, I didn't do that Wisconsin. one. Wisconsin. Uh, I know we lost in uh, the finals in San Jose, and yeah. So I think I was a, a part of probably three, three. if four, maybe. Because uh, yeah. some I did home. play and some I didn't, and then um, and I took a year off here or there too. So I kind of bounced. Yeah. That there was a ten year span where I probably played in about seven or eight nationals. I think we went to the finals just about every time. And um, I want to say I was a part of like four national championships and probably three or four uh, semi semi national or uh, yeah. And I tell people I'm like, 
these were televised. Not only were they televised, yeah. but people were sitting around our court. Right. They were sitting around our court. I mean, it was open nationals. It wasn't a double A what they have now. I mean, it was open. It was the real deal, yeah. right? Yep. Um, so yeah, so that's experiences that we have. Um, and then you did something that I didn't do. So everybody watching, we weren't attached by the hip the whole time. <laughs> we were. You went to France. Though, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, you that, went to France. Was, you did overseas. That wasn't really in my wheelhouse. Like, okay, I was one of the shortest middles in the country, right? right. And and I was right side, but I was obviously be, behind Hilliard. Hello, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't really on my radar to. It wasn't ra on my radar to play go play beach because that was at its pinnacle, right? You had Karch and you had all yeah. those guys, Ken Steffes, right? I mean, try to get in that network was brutal, yeah. right? Yeah. So I didn't think that was in my wheelhouse, but like I didn't even consider going over and then you're like yeah i'm going to france i'm like you're doing what yeah, yeah dude i thought that was awesome talk about that well um that's that's an interesting story in the sense of okay so uh, what year was that like maybe 94 or 95 okay um there was an opportunity for uh some of us to go play in south america for uh um i remember this yeah it was, i think it was called the pacifico games and it was yeah it was, it i remember was a, this who was, was putting a game because you're like sully we gotta do this right and so i mean there was there was like baseball it was in columbia okay there was like baseball i think there was hot uh, uh roller hockey or something gymnastics so it wasn't just volleyball there was there was other teams there was yeah i remember the baseball team anyways our national teams couldn't go to it and so um, you know, our, our national team has two teams, an A team and a B team, right? And they were playing in some tournament somewhere else in the world. And we had won the uh, men's open that year uh, with team ASIC Paul Mitchell. Right. And so basically, I, I guess you would say we were the third best team in the country. Yeah. And so they asked us to represent the country, right? And so we're like, yeah. Well, Columbia for two weeks free? Are you kidding me? We'll go play, <laughs> yeah. thinking we're going to get crushed, right? Well, not everybody could go on that ASIC team. Yeah, I because, couldn't go. Yeah, you couldn't go, and, and like Schroeder couldn't go. Alan couldn't go because he was getting married. And so uh, we, we put together kind of an all-star team. Uh, we, used, uh, we got some guys from the East Coast, East Coast ASICs, mm -hmm. like Harry Reid and Pat Ryan and a couple of those guys. Coley Kaiman. He he went, but he couldn't play because he just had surgery. So he was like our our representative. Chris McGee was on that team. He was our setter, and I think we had like uh, we had Eric Sullivan on that yeah. team, yeah, and Pat Sinclair. They he was playing on the, one of the national teams, but he played with us. So we had one national team player, and we're like, right. hey, let's go down to Columbia. Uh, we'll probably get our butts kicked, but we're you know we're gonna go down there for two weeks and, and, and see the country and, and just it, what a great experience. It's like a mini yeah. Olympics, right? Right. 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 Yeah. It's like, a, remember the old sports festival? Yeah. 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 yeah right. It's probably exactly. like the best thing from sports festival goes, right? Right. Yeah. So we went down there and we we're down there for like two weeks and uh, we ended up winning the gold medal down there. And, <laughs> and we just had a, we had a blast. I mean, it yeah. was, it, it was unbelievable how much fun we had and, and we were successful and got to play in front of a lot of people down there. There was like, it, the, one of our first matches, I think there was a couple thousand people in the crowd. But by the end, we were playing in front of like 10,000 people, which is nice. huge arenas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was unbelievable. It was, it was great. But anyways, I think Eric Sullivan, he, I don't think he had started playing with the national team yet, but he had an agent or something. I'm not really sure. And we were talking one day, and he's like, Bear, would you be interested in going overseas and playing? And I'm like, yeah, for sure. I would love to do that. And he goes, all right, when we get home, I'll, I'll uh, talk to my agent. And I think it was Bill Ashen at the time. Um, and he, uh, when I got home, he contacted me. And he's like, hey, would you be interested in going overseas? And I'm like, yep, I sure would. And he goes, well, can you put some video together? And I put a short video together of some of my uh, play at, at Long Beach State. And then I, when I played in the finals for the uh, Open in Tulsa, that was televised. So I had some tape on that and I put together a small tape and he sent it overseas and I got picked up by a, a team in France and went over there and, and played for a season. Yeah, that's crazy. So the only time I went to France is, uh, I mean, we lived in Germany for a year, so it was a, a military deployment, not mine, but, and uh, yeah, I went to Paris a couple of times and lo we loved it. You know why? Because they treated us so well. 
they really did. They knew we were Americans, and mm -hmm. it, it was it, to me, it was a fantastic time and, and good people over there. Do you, do you experience the same thing? Or I, I had a great time in France. Um, yeah. I, I lived in a small town, Macon, France. It, it's near Lyon or uh, the Swiss border. I, I yeah. think it's like South Central France or okay. whatever, right? Okay. And um, the people were very friendly to me. I, I had a hard time over there um, with not knowing the language. I thought I'd pick up, you know, I could speak Spanish a little bit, and I thought I could pick up French, but it's not an easy language. And right. this was um, pre-internet. Okay. Right. The right, internet right. was just coming All this around. Is, by the way. <laughs> Pardon me? I said everything we're talking about is. Yeah. yeah. So I got a little lonely over there at times, but um, I, I made some good friends. My coach was American, Chris Chiliano, and uh, he and I hung out quite a bit together. And uh, it, it was a great experience, but at times it, it was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. And, and yeah. playing volleyball was awesome. I love that. You get to play, you get paid for it. That was huge. Get to see another country, um, learn another culture. You know, right. I'd been out of the country before, but ne never for longer than a couple weeks at a time. And uh, it really opened my eyes to um, just a lot of things with their culture and how how people look at America outside of America. Right, right. You know, and kind of a bubble we live in a little bit over over here oh, for and, sure. uh, and, and it wasn't all negative but it was just kind of weird to see america outside of america right and and uh and the french culture you know the food was great and it was just it, it was a great experience one i'll never forget i i feel like i went over there kind of as a boy and came back as a man yeah well that's <clears throat> that's huge and that's why I, I can't wait to get some uh current players over there to see if their experiences are any different um, from, from yours, but, um, yeah, so let everybody know we're, I'm um, with Tim Johnson bear, a former teammate of mine and a brother for life, a hall of famer, by the way, <laughs> inducted to long beach state. So you can't take anything away from this guy. Um, so those three books that you read, are those your favorite coaching books? Well, let's see. I, I, because there really wasn't probably at the time volleyball stuff, right? Yeah, you know, I've really never read a volleyball book, to tell you the truth. Yeah. And, and here's another one I read, and I don't remember the name of it, but it was Vince Lombardi's book. He had a couple oh, right. of them, too. And I just right. thought, hey, once I was kind of done playing, um, I I started coaching, and I'm like, I need to kind of – I want to know – I want to get good at it, you know? And right. I want to know what to do, basically, and there's really no manual. So I just thought it would be a good idea to read these top – coaching uh these coaches their books and yeah. i i read like maybe one or two a year for the first five or t five years i i coached i think and i got a lot out of them and uh, yeah. that john wooden book i mean i think they call me coach i think that's what it's called i think it's a must read if you're going to coach i mean i liked his style um he uh i don't know he he played i think he played by the rules for the most part there was some recruiting stuff in there but but whatever the way he treated his players were great phil jackson's book hoop dreams was awesome pat riley i don't remember the name of the book but i just i just thought some of those guys uh, i got a lot of information how to coach right. from from those books yeah right 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 well let's that just kind of leads into your coaching career and you've been kind of all over the place but only in Southern California, right? You've done uh, the women's side of the game. You've done the boys and men's side of the game. What I mean by boys, by high school. Um, when I was getting into coaching and looking back on it, I wish I would have just stuck with it because I got right out of college. Uh, I got into it and then I was in Southern California. I had to pay rent and trust me, those jobs were not paying enough for rent. <laughs> I had some help along the way, don't get me wrong, but um, it was really embedded in my head to coach the men's, mm -hmm. coach the men's, coach the men's. And gosh, I wish I had a mentor outside of that to say, yeah, look at all the, one, you're just good with people in general, right? But look at all the opportunities there are in, in the women's side. And yeah. I, I'd i always say I'm never leaving California. Yeah, You know, so I put myself in a box. Yep. Do you think your career is dictated by you putting yourself in the box of never wanting to leave Southern California? I think so. I yeah. think so. Um, you know, I, I started coaching maybe for the wrong reason a little bit. I mean, I bought a, a new car <laughs> and um, I ran into uh, Eddie Rapp. He's, he's one of the a best. great guy. One he's of the one best. Of the I, best. I, very Eddie and I have a, a long history together. We, we, we call it a love hate relationship. Yeah. In the sense of when we were in high school, 
he went to Edison High School and I went to Fountain Valley, big rivals. Okay. So, so we hated each other, right? <laughs> and, then, um, and then we played together. We were teammates at Golden West College. So oh, then we right. loved each other because we were right, teammates, yeah, right? Yeah. right? Right, right. And then I was ineligible one year, and I don't like to brag about that by any means or bring it up. So he was upset that his second year, we could have been very good, I think, and I was ineligible. So he hated me again, right? And then we started playing for Paul Mitchell together, and we loved each right. other again. And right. then he gave yep. me my first coaching job down, oh, at, nice. uh, down at Santa Margarita. Santa Margarita, yeah. That's right. And um, I, it was funny because we were talking at Coley Kyman's wedding about it. Oh, and, he, and I'm like, I would like to coach, you know. And he gave me a call, and he's like, hey, I got a, I got a position, the JV boys. And I'm like, okay, I'm in. And uh, it was right after I got back from uh, France. And so I, um, I went down there, and I coached the JV. And he's like, hey, uh, would, would you want to coach the girls as well? And so I'm like, oh, sure, I'll, do, I'll coach the girls. And yeah. I thought that was an experience. So I got to coach both guys and girls. Um, and big difference. Like, there is a difference. There is. Oh a difference, yeah. I mean, you know? speed, of the, speed of the game and, it, you know, the height it sounds funny and, and kind of minute, but it's a big deal. The height of the net. Yeah. Um, just, yeah. I mean, you're, you're dealing with guys that are six, seven, six, eight, you know, that are so athletic. And I mean, the women's games, you get some, you get some six, eight, six, nine girls, but it's like three of them. Right. Well, right. now yeah. it, it, it's a different, it's a different game. And just how yeah. you, I don't know. I, I've coached girls and women, um, but not. I, I don't feel like I have a whole lot of experience with them. Yeah, and for sure. I, I think I just I mean, relate. It's on, your resume, the, it's on your resume for sure, but no, yeah, I would say, what are you, 85, 15, 85 yeah. men's? Yeah, 85 I, to 15. It's just, it. it's a different beast. If yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you know, how you communicate with uh, women compared to guys and stuff, and I just, I found it's just, I relate to the guys a little more. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, and I, um, I, I enjoy, I, I think I'm that chameleon. I, I enjoy both. Right. And when I, so when Alan took left, right, to go overseas to play, I took over that Golden West job. And really, who brokered that was Mike Del Sandro, right? Biggs. Yeah. And so I went in knowing what I knew, but man, I was green. I was yeah. super green. Right. And, then Alan gets hurt in Italy, comes back, and we actually co head coach at Golden West. We won the first ever state championship. But at that time, I already knew that Alan's profession was going to be coaching. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I already knew. I think I was so green still that um, I just needed time. I needed right. time. Where Alan was, Alan was in overdrive. He was already in fourth, if not fifth gear. I was still like in second. I mean, I was good at what I did and I, I was good at what I knew, but you know, looking back on it, I'm like, Oh man, I was green, you know? And well, you, you think you're, you own the world at that time and can do it and until you're actually in charge. And then you're like, Ugh, you know, yeah. it was kind of rough, but I think uh, Alan, you know, I noticed Alan a little bit being ahead of the game mentally. I think uh, we were playing. I, I don't remember exactly where it was, but it was men's, open right yeah and we were in the semifinals. i think it was against east coast asics and in the middle of the, and whoever won this would go to the finals and he's out there on the court it's a big game there's i don't know, a ton of people watching and stuff and i think he calls a timeout or he makes this sub and he brings tommy hoff in mm. tommy hoff comes in and it's just like two stuffs boom boom and we're in the finals yeah and i was just like Okay, he's in the middle of the game and he's thinking coaching. And as Hoff, well. uh, Hoff, future Olympian, gold medalist, is on the bench. By the way, yeah, yeah. So we all like the bench we're surrounded yeah. by, right? Yeah. But for him to have the presence of mind in the middle of this huge match to make that adjustment, I was just I was blown away from about that. And I, you know, and he had already, and we, I was, I was just like, okay, see the ball, pass the ball, hit the ball, kind of guy, right. right? Right. And he's thinking strategies like this, and I just thought he was ahead of the game. And, the one, the yeah. one time he helped me was my senior year. I was up against Tim Kelly from UCLA. Mm -hmm. Right? Was well, Tim's like six eight, six nine? Guy's yeah. huge. Tim Kelly was on that team that we went down to. Uh, oh, um, Columbia. Columbia. He was on that team as well. And then who's their setter? Mike Seeley, Mike Seeley, right? Yeah. What's what's Mike? Six five, six seven. I mean, he's he's, yeah, he's, he's tall too, six, tall, six, lanky, six, right? Yep. So I have to not only watch out for Seeley dumping. I and I'm yeah. six three. 
by yeah. the way. Yeah. And as much as high as I can jump, I still got to jump up and, and come, come down. down. Their reach is so high anyway. Yeah. So he's like, Sully, Sealy's the easiest setter to read. I'm like, what? And <laughs> the, he's all American. He's, I mean, he's legit, right? Yeah, he is legit. Yeah. He's like, this is what he does. And he showed me what he did. And oh my gosh, I maxed out every time he, I knew he was going to set the middle. I That's left hilarious. super early when he was going to go the outside. I mm. left early when I, I was never not blocking. Mm. That doesn't, doesn't, doesn't mean that my boy Tim Kelly hit over me, you know, that kind of right. thing. But just the fact that he gave me that one tip, and that wasn't from a player perspective, that was from a coach's brain at an right. early age. Yeah. Does that make he, sense? Yeah. yeah, he was seeing the game at a different level earlier yeah. than a lot of us, that's for sure. So you went to Santa Margarita with um, E-Rap, right? And yeah. then you go into uh, assistant coach at the junior college, Golden West. Yeah, and you guys wind up winning state. So how was that transition? Yeah, so that's that's kind of a funny story too. So back to Mike D'Alessandro. Um, he and I were roommates at the time. Um, we were living together. And uh, I told him I was coaching. And he's like, that's great. And then after the season, he's like, well, why don't you help me over at Golden West? And I think this was like 98, 99. And uh, I'm like, great, I'll do it. And there was another assistant coach there, Steve Yukatel. Yuki. Yuki. Uh, another brother from another mother, you know? He's, yep. he's a great guy. And so he and I were more Mike's assistant, and we had a great team. And I think um, this was – they had won four or three – Previous state championships, I think two with with um, maybe four, two with Allen, and then Mike came in and had one one or two already. Mm -hmm. So it was a great program at the time, and uh, we ended up winning. I think that was ninety nine that we mm -hmm. won. Mm -hmm. And kind of like what you were saying, I I thought you know okay, I coached a little JV. I basically tried to do the practices that I remember doing at Long Beach, yeah, right? I'm a national champion, yeah. you know, multiple times over. I can coach. Yeah. And, <laughs> and not even close. You know? yeah, and right, and yeah. to be under Mike though, I got to tell you to this day, I still learn a ton from Mike. A lot of the drills I do is what I've learned from Mike yeah. and walking in there and seeing how he, uh, um, communicated with the boys and the drills he ran and he's running multiple courts you know, JV, you run one court. Hopefully, you right. have 12 guys. Right. And he's running, you know, we probably had 25 to 30 kids in the gym at the time. And he'd go put me on a court or whatever. And and I would start taking notes. Yeah. And and I'm like, wow, I like that drill. I'll keep that drill or whatever. And then Mike had a um, – I don't remember exactly. He had an opportunity to, to coach, I think um, – where did he go? He left Golden West. In, in 2000 or two, oh, I, what happened was, okay, so I got in 2000, after that Golden West season, um, I got an opportunity to go back to my old high school. They asked me if I would be a, a, a head coach there. Fountain Valley, right? Fountain Valley, exactly. And I was kind of torn. I'm like, do I want to leave college because I'd only coached there one year or should right. I run a program? You know, right. and that's, that's, a, I had to weigh that a little bit. And so I ended up going back to, I went to Fountain Valley and, and I coached the, um, the varsity there, and I ran that program. Yeah, you got a couple I, seconds I, I in that it. Sunset League, right? Sunset League. We actually yeah, lost to Eddie Rapp in the first yeah, round. You got a couple of seconds there. Okay. That's, that's impressive. Sunset League's no joke. Yeah, we took second. We lost to uh, Marina, who had um, um, Wooten, Jeff Wooten. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Hawaii boy. And they were coached by Derek Lucero. And it went down. We lost in five uh, for the league championship. It was it was a battle. But uh, – so, um, yeah, so I, I, I went to Fountain Valley and I learned a lot just even one year there. And after that season, for whatever reason, Mike left Golden West. I'm, I'm not really sure why he left. I'm, I don't remember. Anyways, they asked me if I'd go back to Golden West and be the head coach there. And that's how I, I got started. And it was kind of a, a co-head coach uh, situation with Steve Yucatel. And so we coached that, for about seven or eight years together. So then you started that early 30s. Yeah, I was right so, around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my so my point is, so you're doing this different coaching stints, and you're in your early 30s to do a junior college, not Division One, yeah. right? Yeah. And you get Coach of the Year twice. Yeah. 
And yeah. I think that's important to mention because I say it all the time is, especially in the women's side right now, they're just forcing these coaches to be head coaches so early, either because gender or because they're cheap, but they can get them for cheap. Mm-hmm. And they're failing because they haven't put in the time. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I say, I say like men's basketball and, and football. If you see, hear somebody that's 35 taking a head coaching job, oh my gosh, they're so young, right? right? Yeah. And now your story is the same way. Hey, I did some high school stuff and I did some JC assistance and I went back to high school. Now I'm, now I'm doing, you know, a junior college. What for seven, eight years, I get it twice coach of the year. You're, you kind of led the good path. Well, you know, the, yeah. The path, and I think I, the path I think most coaches should take. And here's a, here's a couple other things I was doing too. Um, I was coaching club at the time mm-hmm. and that was yeah. for surf city. And that was Mike's club. Delisandro's yeah. club. So he put me in on like an 18 twos team or something. I think Alan had the number one team for right. that club. And so, and then I was coaching at golden West. Um, I thought I was coaching someplace else as well. Anyways, I was coaching two to three teams at a time. So, right. I mean, and I had a, a job, you know, right. Um, yeah. Forget about that. So, Oops. but right. So I was, I was, oh, I was always coaching two to three teams for five, 10 years or whatever. And I just emerged myself into it. Yeah. Um, and that I helps mean, so a you, ton. Yeah. Oh, you talked about mentors. So Delhi, Delhi's your probably number one mentor, right? right. Yeah. And I, then, I, I, yeah. I've always considered him one of the best minds in the volleyball game that mm-hmm. I've ever seen. He just yep. has it. Yeah. I mean, we all know, you know, everybody's got demons in their life, that yeah. kind of thing. But in terms of a volleyball brain and just, he was special, right? So, yeah. and then I have you, and I still say it to this day, and you're kind of like, oh, okay, Sully. <laughs> the reality is you can train at a very, very high level at any level in terms of age group, right? So you've done USA developmental stuff. You've done high school. You've done junior college, and <clears throat> you've done colleges and, and club, and you're just so experienced with that. And and as well as Kalani Mahi, you two remind me of each other in terms of how we progress this drill. So here's drill A, very basic, very fundamental, but then you can add B to A. And you can mm-hmm. add C and D and make it more difficult. And you can go all the way up to M and N. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not, this is one drill and this is how it goes. It's like, here's the foundation. You Okay, now we're going to add this. Okay, now we're going to spin this ball. Okay, then we're going to go from the back row, and then we're going to add a middle. You know, like it, it, it's just between you and Kalani, um, two of the best I think that I've ever been around. And in terms of just the game itself, I, I got to put Del Sandro as one of the top ones for sure. What about you? What about your mentors? Well, yeah, yeah, Deli for sure. Um, I've probably coached with Deli more than I've coached with anybody else. I would say. Yeah. Um, and his mind is unbelievable, um, where yeah. like the drills he's, he comes up with and, and things like that. And I'm always looking, you know, as, as a coach, when I first started, I, I was just like, okay, I like that drill. I'm going to write it down and I'll copy that or whatever. And, um, I spent a lot of time with Alan too, Alan Knight, um, doing camps during the summer, either at Long Beach or that USA stuff. Um, he helped me a little bit, uh, or I helped him a little bit when he was coaching the national team, I'd come in and. And I had a really good opportunity um, coaching that Pan Am Cup team with Sean Patchell or whatever. But um, Yeah, that was huge. Yeah. So I would say when we first started, Alan and I, we were coaching this USA development, uh, high-performance stuff. And one of the first camps we did, you know, we had a computer. And in between sessions, we were making the, um, the template for those camps. And we ended up probably doing, I don't know, 20 camps together after that. um, And we're still doing camps to this day. And it's great because I'll go in there with him and he's, you know, he's, he coaches at a different level, obviously with Long Beach and coaching the national team. And I'm still learning from him. So Alan's a big mentor as well. Um, But I remember Alan telling me, he goes, wait till you get to the point where you start creating your own drills. You know, not just copying them from other people. I'm like, wow, right. I don't even know if I'll ever do that. You know, but then, <laughs> then uh, down the road, you know, it's like almost every practice or every situation you're, you're put in, you can ha- you ha- you should have a practice plan. I, I think you should write down your practice Absolutely. plan. But there's always something, there's always something that's going to happen. Somebody gets hurt. Somebody doesn't show up. You have weird numbers. So... You so you got to switch on the fly. You got to switch on the fly. Yeah. And, and I... I took this advice from uh, D'Alessandro is like, 
Um, he's a coach. Uh, he would stop practice a little bit if need be, okay, and talk to the guys. But basically, he goes, when you were a player, did you like a coach to just sit there and talk the whole time? Right. And, and you need some of that, right? You need to get them on the right. But he was like, you play. I, I can't tell you how many, how many practices I've been to that a coach will explain a drill for 20 yeah. minutes. And the and kids then, are bored. And, and, then the girl, and then the kids are looking around like, I don't know what to do. And then they get in there. <laughs> yeah. They try to run the drill. Yeah. Then that same coach chews them out because They're you're an idiot. How come you didn't listen to me? Like, yeah. And then, you take, then they take another 20 to 30 minutes to explain. So yeah. you're talking an hour to get one drill started. Right. Right. right? And like you said, the most important thing is, were you prepared before you came in here? No, you weren't. Obviously, you weren't. Right. And it shouldn't take that long. So not only you don't have to be this organizational freak, but be professional, do your job, I, be I like, mentored, be mentored appropriately. Yeah. I like Delhi's attitude um, towards his philosophy, I guess, for a, a standard practice. Okay. And I, I don't want to get into weightlifting and all that stuff, but basically I think uh, a good practice is about two and a half hours long. You take the first 15 to 20 minutes and you get a, a good warm up. Okay. And then for the first hour, you basically, you work on things you need to technique stuff could be, you know, passing, serving, whatever. And then you spend like the last half of practice and you play game type drills where it's six on six type drills, wash drills, whatever. So you're playing the game. You know, some, some coaches will never even have their, their, their players play. They're just, they're just doing technical stuff. Right. And, or the opposite. They just play. Or they play and they don't work on the technique stuff, right? Right. Exactly. And, you know, and I, I've seen some of the practices go no more than two hours. This isn't lifting weights at all. Go, hour and a half. But it's yeah. so efficient. Right. It's so efficient because they're prepared. I think. When you uh, have, I mean, I've been horror stories, three hour practices. I'm like, well, I get why it's three hours. Because you take an hour to do one drill. Like, are you out of your minds? But as a player, did you like that? No, I mean, you know, it's you've had those you coaches where you sit and, there and listen to the guy yeah. the whole time, and you're like, I want to play. Right. So yeah. that's why I'm here. That's why I try to emulate those coaches that I liked playing for, you know, and, and contribute that to, my, to my, my program or my teams. And, and I do wave the carrot a little bit in front of them. I'm like, hey, I know some of this uh, technique stuff gets a little old, gets a little boring, but every, every touch matters, okay? And you do this well, and then we play. Right. Okay. And they're like, yeah, we want to play. We want to play. And if you, uh, but if you don't take this stuff serious and you just kind of go through the motions, we're, we're going to do this all practice and you don't get to play. And that right, usually right, motivates right. them enough. And, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's and on the opposite philosophy. end, right? On the opposite end, you get high end athletes that, you know, some of the best in the country and they just want to play. Right. Where I remember Jared Elliott 10 years ago when they won the national championship says, remember all those boring, drills yeah. on our technique. Yeah. I told you they would pay off. I told you, you just need to put the time and, and effort and focus in and it'll pay off, you know? And I think that's lost on you too. And I think that's why, well, I mean, not the only reason, but that's why coaching isn't easy. It's hard. No. I always say, I say it all the time. And there's some great coaches out there and that do, you know, sometimes they have a 500 season, but I'd play for them. And then there's some horrible coaches out there that just need to leave. Right. <laughs> period in the story right so right. hey so you have santa margarita you went to golden west back into high school fountain mm -hmm. valley then uh you took on a couple years at vanguard which i was uh, a volunteer coach for you so i got to see you in action that was really fun for me then you were head coach at golden west yeah um right am i getting yeah. this timeline right yeah yeah, yeah. I, i'd kind of forgotten about uh vanguard so that's that's kind thanks, of funny thanks no no, no i'm, I'm not, with you not no you. whatever bud yeah no, okay that was the that women been your coaching. highlight forget was... the two coach of the years it should have been your highlight vanguard university <laughs> in southern california was solely as my volunteer that's dude right. um so then you graduated to international coaching not only international coaching international head coaching in northern Ireland small division, right? right? But you did it. You absolutely did it. And so international player, international coach, um, is volleyball volleyball? Is volleyball volleyball? Volleyball yeah, is so, volleyball. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, think I mean, you, you know, you got different cultures and it's not yeah. like Ireland's this huge Brazil or United States or, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. You had a smaller country and I mean, I know you had a ball obviously, but 
I took the same system I learned over here, over there. And yeah. was, was that new for them? It was new for them. Okay, and, and, all right. And that reminds me of a, a story, a little bit of a story where I was, uh, you know, the the system that we ran pretty much at Long Beach, you know, you hold yep. on defense, you're not guessing, yep. you don't flop on your back, you land on your chest, this sort yep. of thing. You wait and react, that sort of thing, right? Everybody has their own style or whatever. But I took that over. And we were watching film one day, and this was, I don't know, a couple months after I'd been there. And at first, these guys were just like, what are you talking about? They're all over the place, right? They're doing their own thing, not a whole lot of structure. And we start watching film, and I'm like, okay, you need to be doing this. You need to be doing that here. At the, you know, you stop the film at a certain point and go, okay, why are you jumping in the air when you should be on the, on the ground right now? That's right, sort of thing, right, right, right. Okay? Yeah. yeah, their eyes weren't right or something. They weren't yeah, looking at the right. What are you looking okay. at right now? Okay, right, right. why are you going left when the ball's going right? That, right, that sort right. of thing, okay? Yeah. But uh, it started, like, after watching film a little bit and calling these guys on it, not just, like, tell them, hey, you got to do this, but actually having them see what they're doing right and wrong. I remember one of the players goes, hey, we, this system works. This system works. We just got to stick to it. Because, you know, we struggled a little bit. We had our ups and downs over there. But um, they bought into it, and they became uh, more successful. But they, you know, they they were just kind of doing their own thing. They really didn't have a lot of good coaching, I, I would say. I don't want to say anything bad about them over there. They're great guys. But um, they no, like that system, and I, mean, I, I took that system. Your... So volleyball is volleyball, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can you can get coaches that only know their level, and they may have known in a JV coach or even you know just a, a lower level. I mean, okay, so I'm not ripping on coaches that are at other other lower levels, and what I mean by lower yeah, levels like yeah. JC Division three, you know, that, sure. those kind of compared to like the national team. Sure. It's just different, right? right? And you have different athletes, and mm -hmm. and there are very, very successful that coaches that I would play for in Division Three that have been there for years and have won year after year. You're just like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You must be doing something right, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Um, but it is different to carry it over to higher levels, and so when you bring, you know, like Alan, perfect example. He goes to the he's our Olympic coach, right? Mm -hmm. And then he gets to know some of the best coaches in the world that are coaching their national teams and he, they start sharing with him. Yeah. We're talking like statistics stuff. And yeah. um, this is what we're looking at. And he brings that to Long Beach. They're at a whole yeah. nother level now. Then they win yeah. national championships, two of them. Right. So I, you know, I, yeah, I, I saw, I'm, not, I'm not ripping on those guys, but yeah. it's different. And so if you bring higher level training, you know, and, and the fact that they appreciate it, they should get better. Well, they over there, you know, um, Volleyball is not the number one sport over there. It's right, right. football, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, they just had limited exposure maybe right. over there. And then – Yeah, I, see, I can see that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's just like anywhere. I mean, even in our country, right? The exposure yeah. is, okay, well, your head coach played, you know, JV, and, you know, then in a bigger city you got – Division one coaches coach in high school. It's a whole different thing. I mean, I've seen that in football too. You get division one players that kind of get the game and then they coach high school. Yeah. Oh, their defenses are crazy. They're like, you know, they're doing high school. I mean, they're doing college schemes in high school. That's, right. and it really transfers over. So, okay. So you, you've done the Northern Ireland thing, uh, team USA. You actually did hope international for men's for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and then did you go back? Did you go to ocean view after hope? <laughs> yeah. Um, I did just for, yeah. just for a season. I was there. I was, yeah, I was coaching JV there and, okay. um, and, uh, I was coaching, um, I helped with the varsity as well. Okay. I think I was there for about two years. And then you wound up starting a brand new program in Santiago Canyon college, right? right? And you're still there today. So starting, I mean, starting your own program, that's right. historical and <laughs> super tough. Well, super tough. And and yeah. you had to go through the whole COVID like yes, yeah. you so, know, up as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um I got a call from uh I was coaching club at the time too. Um I was coaching for Ohana for Paul Munoz, another Long Beach State alumni. And he said that there was a job available up at um a position that's available up at Santiago Canyon College that he'd been contacted on, but for whatever reason, he couldn't do it. And he goes, hey, why don't you apply for this position? 
And I'm like, okay, kind of a shot in the dark. And I went up there and, and interviewed for it, and I, I, I got the job. And uh, um, it was – I've been there now. I think this is my seventh year at Santiago, and it's something I'd never – done before so it's kind of i i like that because something new you know i'm always kind of looking for i like to try new things or whatever and to start um a program is yeah i i did it um you know we were we, it was a little rough the first couple of years but i i contacted um a bunch of the local high schools and and got on the recruiting trail and and put a a, a team together and, and uh um Going through COVID was a little difficult, but we we have uh, we've made the playoffs a few times, and uh, yeah, it, it's quite an experience. I got a lot of support from my athletic director up there, um, Martin Stringer. He's from the UK. He doesn't know a whole lot about volleyball, but um, he's he's made it where hey, if you can just win a couple games this year and then do better next year and get these you know get your roster fuller and fuller every year. And uh, um, he's been a huge reason why I've been successful up there because he's not like, hey, you need to come out and win these games right off the bat or whatever. Just uh, at first it was just like get some guys in here that, um, that uh, won't embarrass the college, you know, that are good students and that stuff. And, and he, he allowed me to start kind of slow or go at my pace at least. And um, I, I, I do kind of feel proud that I, I did that. Um, the yeah. women's program up there has gone kind of up and down. They've had three or four coaches. We started at the same time, okay? Right, right, right. Both pro- programs. So that struggled a little bit, but I've been there the whole time, and uh, I really enjoy it. It's it's a great campus. It's a good environment up there, and um, it's a lot of fun. So going full circle, so do you think, looking back on it, that you made the right decision just to stay in Southern California, or would you – Looking back on it, right? Yeah, would yeah. you go? You know what? Ohio's not that bad. Florida's not that. Bad. Alabama's, hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. yeah, I kind of wonder. Kind of wonder because I've always given you a hard time about, dude. You pay how much? Yeah. Do you not know what's on the, across the country? Yeah, <laughs> Southern California, right? And I know the benefits, right? Beaches right there, ocean, all that kind of stuff. And I hear that all the time, by the way. And I just laugh because I probably go to the beach more often than most Southern California people do. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but it's there. Um, but, yeah, what do you – have you ever thought about that? A little bit. You know, that's that's interesting you say that because um, I've uh, I've pretty much lived most of my life within about a five- or ten-mile radius, Fountain Valley, Huntington Beach. And I've had the opportunity to do a lot of traveling through volleyball, which has been great. And I've seen a lot of different places, and it's been great. I've got to live out of the country a couple times. Yeah, even um, even in the states, right? You've done camps in Pittsburgh. Did you do one in Vegas with? Were you there with me when we did Vegas with Alan? Possibly. I've done I've, uh, with Alan. Um, I've done probably twenty camps in Vegas. Okay, we probably yeah, yeah, we probably done that. But still, you've been to, you've been across our country Boise yeah. with you. Some, yep. Oh some yeah, camps yeah, up there. yeah. That was a sweet camp. That we should go into that a different time. Probably going that with Hoff. But yeah, yeah that was uh, that was that was a stacked. That was yeah. That was a good. Camp, I mean, camp from coach's perspective. You had a gold medalist. You had Sabrina. three national champions, Division One national champions. You just had a coach that were in the finals in the Division One women's game there with Hossfeld, and yeah. yeah, that was crazy. And then yeah, that's a yeah. whole another story. And but it was, it was that picked was us up camp. in a limo. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I had to treat you guys right. That's <laughs> what it came down to. Rod Stewart, remember. Yeah, I've done some camps. I do camps in Florida too, in Pittsburgh. I I do camps. Yeah, and, and it's another way I think to kind of hone your skill. Um, I I think camps are great because you you uh, you coach with other coaches from around the area or out of state or whatever, and you learn from them and you pick up. Like every year, the game evolves, right? And if you can do for me, I do camps during the summer. Uh, it helps my coaching evolve too, and and stay on kind of what's. What's new? What What's new in the volleyball world? And that's how I... You know, there's rules every year. By the way, for the record, I wish they would stop with the rules. I think they should bring in rules every four years, mm. not every year. Yeah. Just it's let just, it play out for a while. 
Yeah, you know what? Like, I, I didn't really like the libero at first. I'm like, what is this? They're bringing some guy on with a different color jersey, da 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 But, you know, I, it, it brings uh, ball control to the game, and it, the rallies last a little longer now. I'm kind of used to it. I, you know, well, that's I what like the hands it. do. That's what the first ball over with your hands, you know, yeah. you can absolutely butcher it just to keep the yeah. rally in play. But I don't like the second touch, how they're – yeah, they, they've about loosened it doubling up. that thing. I'm like, so then all you need is the tallest person out there just to chuck it out there. Where's right. where's the, you know, where's the skill set in that? So that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. But my point is, is yeah. like, make decisions. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, right after the Olympics, here are the rules for the next yeah. four years, and leave well, it alone. It just seems like something happens though. Like every year, something happens, and there needs to be a rule about it. Either if it's making the playoffs in a different way or whatever, and. Yeah, I think sometimes they tinker with the game too much a little bit. And yeah, like you're saying, let yeah. let it play out for a few years and just see. So yeah, a few there, years. There's, there's a fine line on that. Two years, but just yeah. leave it alone. You know, let it let it play it out. But uh, so yes, yeah. so do you regret staying okay, down there? So, so me personally, okay. Um, like I said, I was I, I've lived in basically a ten mile radius my whole life. I'm, I'm I don't know. It's the community I know. Okay. And, and moving out of the country, and I, right after Long Beach, I moved up north to my sister's house and got a job up there, and I lasted for about four months. And I just know it's just kind of – even when I was out of the country with my family, I still missed, like, Huntington Beach and, and Fallon um, Valley, my community. Yeah. And um, I don't know if I could go move to Ohio. You know, obviously, the money's great, and uh, well, I mean, coaching, I mean, like – a women's yeah, team. No, I don't yeah. know if I would be doing it for the right reason, though. I really well, enjoy coaching the guys. You won't succeed or you won't be happy either, you know? I mean, you know, I've thought about going to make some of that money. Uh, I right. think I'm past that in my career now, but when I was yeah, younger, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if I would have been happy with it. And mm. uh, I don't have any regrets on on the path I've chosen, to tell you the truth. So would, you, think, would you leave now? So let's um, say let's say what? let's say division one school, and yeah. I'm not talking, I'm not even talking top twenty five. Okay, division one school outside of California. Probably women, probably not. <laughs> probably Southern not. California you know, boy uh, through and through, uh, baby. Yeah. And like you know, <laughs> I'm happy. Okay. I have this, no, that's all I'm right. a teacher now too. I have my teaching. Yeah. Credential. Oh yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, if I had an opportunity possibly to go international again, I, I might do that. Oh, yeah, oh. I, I really like uh, being outside of the country and, and experiencing that. I wouldn't want to yeah. do it longer than a couple of years. But yeah. um, I, I would if, if an international um, opportunity came up, I might I might consider that. You know, um, when I was uh, coaching in Ireland, I had my 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 first wife and kids over there. And they were they were young. And it was hard on my my wife at the time because uh, she didn't really know anybody over there. And, and there was periods of time when I was traveling and she was by herself raising two kids. Right. It was, it was right. difficult for her. Oh, and, that uh, sounds familiar. That's, that's what happened in Germany. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Yep. I was, I was, it was a real reversal though. I was home in a foreign country and yeah. the wife was gone. That, it's not easy. It's not easy. And no, I had, it wasn't. I had an opportunity. We played Iceland. And the Iceland coach is like, hey, when you're done with Ireland, would you consider um, coaching up in Iceland? I'm like, well, that sounds like a good opportunity. And uh, I talked to my wife, and she's like, nope. (laughs) She (laughs) she wanted nothing to do with it, right? But, yeah, yeah, I mean, when when you're in that international uh, uh, environment, some doors open for you or whatever. And, um, you know, I, I I liked the international level. I I thought, and if I had a chance to do that again, maybe I would do it for a couple of years. Huh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, well, brother, that's all I had. So, yeah. you got Tim the Bear Johnson, national champion, multi division one national champion, <laughs> Open Club national, multiple national champion, Hall of Fame coach of the year, my brother for life. I appreciate you, buddy. All right, Sully. Anytime.